These simple eight steps take a little time to be explained, and that's what I'm going to do now, is break them down and spend a message time with you and really explain how we can use each of these steps to create the magical, loving, grateful life that we know we deserve and that we already have. And if you look in the mirror and the reflection in the mirror is your own and I have on a orange shirt. If I'd like this shirt to be a different color, I need to go change my shirt. If my mind is thinking negative thoughts in any way or that I don't have enough health, something's wrong with my body, something's wrong with my job, I don't have enough wealth, I don't have enough harmony, I don't have enough peace, I don't have enough time in the day, then I have to change my thoughts. Everything about you, all your words that come out of your mouth are gonna be reflected right back at you. I have to speak better words. I have to think better thoughts. I have to imprint more love in my own house so that my children can receive more love, so my dog can receive more love, so my husband can receive more love. If I don't imprint the love, there's nothing there to come right back at me. So we talk about lesson one being reflection. I want to be plugged in, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom of heaven, and all righteousness, all truth. I want the truth. And all will be added onto you. Everything's going to be reflected right back at me. So if I change the object in the mirror myself, then I'm going to get a greater reflection everywhere else. Each of us can only change ourselves. I have to change me. So if I want the orange top to change, I got to go change something in my life. My shirt, my thoughts, my speech, my projection, my smile. We have to change our thoughts, change the way we think. There was a wonderful gentleman that was on the news well years ago and i was reminded of the story so i share it with you it was a gentleman who now can run in a, a um, he goes out in alaska in the winter time he has no shoes on no shirt on and he's running jogging and people thought he was crazy and so some some different uh talk shows got him on and one of them said you must have different dna you must be an alien you must they put him in a meat locker. They dunked him in cold water. His temperature didn't change. And he kept repeating to everybody, Frost is my friend. Frost is my friend. And as he kept saying, Frost is my friend, we started realizing, wow, that's interesting. He's creating a different reflection. He's creating that Frost is actually his friend. So. If I have something in my life that I view not friendly, I must absolutely create something friendly out of it. There was another gentleman who took in his meat locker in the back of his truck. There was a story my uh, friend of mine was telling me and he, he thought, oh my goodness, I might freeze to death in this truck if I'm locked in. And he was the last one on the shift and sure enough, the truck shut the door and he died in the truck. The truck wasn't even on. The freezer wasn't even on. Our mind is the most powerful part of us because God, the mind in the Trinity, Jesus, the body in the Trinity, and the Holy Spirit are three in one. We have a mind, a body, and a spirit or a soul. Now, we're of God. If we are of God, we're a trinity. We need to change our mind, our body, and our soul. And they absolutely have to match beauty, harmony, peace. We have to change the way we think, and we have to view our world friendly. Expect something different. Well, 
you can experiment and you can start trying and, and this is very fascinating. What if instead of somebody handing us an idea and we reacting to their idea, we order our own pizza. We order our own idea and we expect something completely different. We expect the magic in every moment. So my girlfriend was with me yesterday and the county called her up and said, Ilsa, you have bushes that need to be cut down and it's gonna cost you $7,000 roughly to get those bushes out because they're, they're illegal now in our county in the state of Florida. And so she said, okay. And I always, th she said, I'm gonna try Creese's steps. She hung up the phone, she took out her pen and she said, I need to expect something different. <laughs> so she expected for free that the bushes would be removed and they'd enhance her property. Well, they call, she called the county back and said, you know what? Years ago, I don my husband and I donated $5,000 to the county to enhance the backside of our lake. Now you're saying these bushes that I didn't plant, but are now illegal and people are supposed to pay themselves to have them removed. I think that you should remove them if you'd be so kind. And I think that if you'd like to enhance my property, you can. The next day they came, removed all the bushes for free and came up to her door and said, yes, you're right. We can remove those. They're, even though they're on an easement and the, everybody else has to pay for them, you are gonna, we'll do it for you. And we just did come on outside and see it's all done. She expected the miracle. She created a better order with her pizza and she got exactly what she wanted. That's what we're gonna learn. How can it really be? So we continue on and Yatsik sitting next to Ilsa says to me, I created a hat I wanted this weekend. I was at the flea market and they were closed already. And I said, I really just wanted to come here to get a hat because I power wash and I need a brim all the way around instead of just a baseball cap. So he said, I want the hat. Well, his little daughter who's eight looks around and says, you know what, dad, there's a hat right there, just like you're talking about hanging on the parking lot post. Somebody must have lost it and somebody hung it up. He says, that's exactly the hat I want. He went and took the hat, washed it, and it was at the meeting last night when we were all together, all of us friends. So how does all this happen? Is it a coincidence or are we creating our reality? Has God allowed us to have some choice, some co-creation with him? When God had Adam name the animals, did God just say, I forgot, I can't do it anymore? Or did God say, maybe I want my creation to co-create some things with me. Maybe I want them to imagine. Maybe I want them to be artists and create. Maybe I, as a parent, want to encourage the co-creation. Wow. So I started thinking over my lifetime, how come there's so many miracles in my life? How come when I say something like God, I can't remember Rolodex cards on my grocery shopping list and I've been at the office supply store five times, I want you to remind me. The next day I come to work, there's big boxes, which I've never seen the sides of bread boxes, sitting against my doorstep of Rolodex cards this big. I have never seen anything like that to this day. And I laughed hysterically because I know exactly how they got there. I ordered them up. So God, the guy, the same magic power that can part the Red Sea, that can move mountains, that can make an ax head swim to the surface, that can create Noah to leap out of his mother's womb, singing praises to God. I have three children. They didn't leap out of me singing anything. How is this possible? Unless there's magic in this universe, unless God himself is so powerful that he is the creator of a book right here called the Holy Bible. Wow, it's like Harry Potter. It's the book of magic. It's got miracle after miracle in it. And he left it here 
as a manual for our life. Wow! Miracle after miracle, magic after magic, and he left it here for us. Maybe if we took an eight-step course to figure out how we could use the miracles, use the magic that God left here when Jesus died, he left us, when Jesus died, he left us his Holy Spirit. Not a Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit. And before he died, he says, I wish that you do greater works than I ever did. That's amazing stuff, guys, amazing stuff. So I said, maybe just me, I decided that I'm gonna take all this power and use it or maybe some other people might want to try step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and use the magic. And that's exactly what got me excited to do this course because I said, it's so wonderful. It's so easy. It is so easy that the creator himself doesn't know how. That's what it says in the Bible. And we'll get to that when we get to step number three. So, how do we expect something different so that we can expect the magic? How do we grow our imagination? <laughs> How do we grow our imagination, folks? Wow. If we can imagine, we can create. Anybody who can imagine can create something. You don't have to be an artist. You just have to have a mind that wants to imagine. Think of the simple job of naming all the animals. Now that is a job because I study them with my kids as a homeschool mom and there's a lot of animals. So God gave Adam this little teeny task of naming thousands of creatures. That's amazing. So if we can imagine, we can create. Now, what if, what if, the Holy Spirit I know has no limitations, no laws of gravity, nothing holding God down, nothing at all holding God down, nothing. So if we would push away all the things we were taught, that there's the law of gravity and the law of physics and the law of lift, and we start thinking about the law of gravity, and then we start thinking, well, the law of lift supersedes the law of gravity because an airplane that's tons can fly. But we're really thinking, wow, everything falls. Well, I just flew to New Jersey and back, and once that heavy two-ton airplane got off the ground, it kept flying. And it landed exactly where it wanted to go, and then all the way back down here to Florida. So, if indeed the Bible constantly can change the laws, change them. The mountains can move, the Red Sea can part, Moses can lead all the slaves out of Egypt, and all the water comes back down and washes away the chariots and all the soldiers. Wow, everything in the Bible is a miracle, and we're made in God's image. And he charges us to use His Holy Spirit that He's left here after Jesus died. His Holy Spirit's on this earth. And we are of God. What if there were no laws? Maybe there aren't any laws. Maybe that is something that other people want to use, but I don't need to believe in all those restricting laws of gravity etc etc the physical laws let's push them aside for a moment and let's think that there's the greatest genie standing in front of me right now and that greatest genie is going to grant you and me all the wishes we could ever imagine not just three on new year's three resolutions how about the genie says you can have, be, or do everything you want. 
That changes things up a little bit. I can have, be, or do everything I want. You can have, be, and do everything you want. Wow. What if we can command the universe at a different level? What if when Jesus died and he said it was finished, he meant all those binding laws? What if he, when he shed his blood of perfect vibration on this earth, said it was finished so that they can do their magic now? that the law is gone and that they are free, they are, their hearts are unrestricted, their souls are unrestricted, they can create with me all the magic, they can name all the animals, and we love to name things. We name our husbands, we name our children, we name our pets, we name things. So we like to create, just like Adam did. We like to co-create. Now let's command the universe on a different level. Let's put emotion with our thoughts. So when you buy a car, you go shopping, and the car that you pick might be different than the car that I pick. The color might be different, the size might be different, the need might be different. One might need better gas mileage than the other. One of us might need more room in the car than the other. So we put our emotional response to it. I like this. And when you really like it, you're gonna get up and do it. So if we need to go and work out and we say, mm, you know what, I really need to go work out tomorrow and that's all you give it. But if you say, I am going to work out tomorrow, I love working out, I need to work out, I've got all my things set up to go, I've got my water bottle packed, I'll leave the house whether it's raining or snowing or sun is shining and I'm going to get there by 7.30 in the morning tomorrow and you write it down and you put the sticky note on the door and on your mirror to ready to get up and go in in the morning, you're gonna get there. And if you're the teacher, <laughs> even more motivation. So the difference is sometimes we kind of think a thought and we don't put our loving emotion behind it. Because when we are so excited to do something, when the color of the car is right and the size of the car is right and our desire is so willing, we are going to make it happen. Emotion drives us as people. Let's get the emotion flowing into every thought we have and our thoughts and our intentions are one thing, but when we mix an emotion and attach an emotion on. And if it's beautiful, positive, and loving, we're really motivating ourselves to make an action. We access our mind with our feelings, with our emotions. So we think the thought, and then we have to attach emotion to it. I am so grateful, I am so excited, I am so passionate, I can't wait. I'm in love with this. I'm in love with them. When we put the emotion on, it becomes a reality. So thoughts are one thing, intention is another, but emotion drives a human. Put emotion on anything that you want to get done in your life and it will happen. So we access our mind with our feelings and our emotions. The more positive feelings we have, the more positive emotions that we drive ourselves with, the more we'll get done in our life. Visualize what you want to happen. Visualize the perfect body. Visualize the fit individual. Visualize the slim new harmony you want in your life. Visualize everything in a perfect form. Don't visualize. That's why watching the newspaper, when you see somebody shooting somebody, you turn the news on and they're telling you something didn't happen well over there, or that didn't turn out the way they thought, or the storm is coming, and they repeat over and over the mistakes. Some poor truck driver gets in a car accident, the truck tips over, and it shows on the news at 6 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock, and at 9 Poor guy makes a mistake, and it's preached over and over. Goethe said that. He said the truth. Mistakes are preached over and over, but the truth is not preached over and over. 
We need to preach ourselves the truth over and over and over again. I am great. My world is perfect. I am wonderful. My life is awesome. I can't wait for tomorrow. It's so wonderful. I'm beautiful. I'm thin. I'm be happy. I'm in harmony. I'm at peace. I am calm. I'm exciting. We got to preach. We've got to beat our own drum. When you go to work, your boss is not saying you are the very best person. Ah, you're awesome. You're wonderful. You're super to every employee that walks in the door. You have to say it to yourself. So we access our mind with our feelings. Make them wonderful. Make them emotionally awesome. Make them magical. Visualize what you want. Two times a day at night and in the morning. Stand in front of the mirror, cheer yourself on, take out your notebook and start writing down all the wishes you want from the genie. Write and write and rewrite. And I want you to write them in this form. God spoke, I am that I am. So, I am grateful or I'm happy, excited, thrilled, overjoyed, whichever word you want to put in there, whichever adjective. It's fun, my kids are taking their writing classes and they have lists and lists of adjectives, positive, emotional adjectives. I am excited that I have, already have, not gonna have, because God can deliver like this. He doesn't take a long time. Miracles happen in a moment. That I have, and then make your list the perfect job, the perfect wife, the perfect life, the perfect cookies, whatever you want. List it, the perfect walk with God, the perfect weight, the perfect health. I am so excited, I am in perfect health. That should be the top of your list. I am so grateful that I am God's creation. I am so grateful that I am fit and trim. I am so grateful that I am a genius and create money out of thin air. It can get as wild as you want because your life is magic and your creator wrote a book proving how quick it is that he can do magic in your life. So every day practice practice these are our tools so tool number one cheer yourself on fill your cup up with love for yourself when i go down and i said step six lead with love the only way you can do that is if you fill up your heart your soul your cup with love gratitude and compassion I love myself. I have to be compassionate for myself first. I'm thankful for myself and I will embrace anything my body and mind and heart need. I fill myself up so that then when I take my mirror, what reflects out and back to me is love, gratitude and encouragement. So calm and peace all these steps are to get one goal to make you calm and at peace as jesus was and when he needed to go out in the woods to get calm and at peace he constantly wandered away he constantly went in the wilderness he constantly wandered off so that he could do step one seek ye first the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven and all God's righteousness, all God's truth, and all will be added to you.